ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एंड चेयरपर्सन सो आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द क्लाइमेट चेंज इम्पैक्ट एडेप्टेशन एंड प्रैक्टिस एंड पॉलिसी इन नेपाल आई फोकस ऑन नेपाल व्हाट दे हैव द लोकल एडेप्टेशन प्रैक्टिस एंड इम्पैक्ट एज वेल एज द पॉलिसी एडेप्टेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड दिज प्रेजेंटेशन आई हैव टू फोकस वन पार्ट mainly about the impact and adaptation and another part is the review the policy in the present uh, Nepal government policy what are the policy and the gaps so I have divided the two parts uh, for these presentations and then you know we are the very small and then uh, country in between the India and China and but we are the very much highly vulnerable uh, countries because it, uh, when talk the, uh, they have the report that the Nepal is the fourth most vulnerable country attribute to the high exposure because the, we have the, in the high mountain, we have the more than 0.06 degree temperature raise annually as compared to the global, it is very high. As well as we have the high sensitivity because the fragile, the, this geology and the steep slope with the mountains. And then we have the low adaptive capacity, most of the, because we have the, many people are poor and difficult to assess and difficult to adaptation practice, low, low technology. So, although these are the, we are the uh, suffering from this impact, but although we, uh, uh, like the less developed country like Nepal, we emit very low negligible amount of the, this greenhouse gas, but we have the impact is the, uh, we have the more. So, in the such situation, uh, Ministry of Environment, uh, Government Nepal also projected, we have the, the different time frame, there are the increasing trend of the temperatures, and then when the ultimately temperature has increased, there is the uh, impact on the high mountain of the snowfall and uh, releasing the glacier melting and releasing the high volume of water or the um, variability in the precipitations. So let's, let's see the temperature. We agree all we, we in the, from the yesterday we talked about the temperature has increased uh, all over the world and we have the, in the Nepal we have to since the last uh, 1975, 2006 we have also increased 0 0.02 uh, 0 0.04 annually and also 20, 2006 is the warmest year in these records. So, additionally, in, uh, talk about the precipitations. Precipitation also the highly variability because we have the temp, the we, we have the below the 70 meter altitude to the 8,000 meters. So we have the very high uh, variations. So in such a situation, we have the uh, precipitation also the variability and mainly the uh, they have the trend observation shows that the high precipitation with short periods and also there is the uh, change in the, uh, the monsoon season to so the shift from the early June to the delay to the uh, in the August similar to the last presentations and also the present the intensity is high and winter uh, rainfall is the low these are the reported in the last uh, this couple of years and also in such a situation in the temperature and precipitation are the, the, the variability which also helps to impact on the, uh, the, this poor community because they are the um, very low resilience in the climate wrecks. So in such a situation, uh, we have done about the, this uh, local impact and adaptation practices from the local community as well as the institutions, local institutions, and also review the policy and practices to implement uh, the adaptations and mitigation. So there are the two objectives I, we have selected, and these are the study area. Uh, this we call the Narayani Basin, one of the big watershed, and it linked from the high mountain uh, across the Himalaya region. Also, we call the uh, near the Tibet side. These are the all the border of the Tibet to the, the, the this is the border of the India. So we, we transit from from the both high mountain to you know, Tarai. So linked to the India and Tibet both. So these are the study sites, they are the high mountain and the mid mountain, these are the mid mountain air sites and this is the yellow part is the Tarai, the low uh, border of the India. So for this study, uh, we have done the different uh, primary data collections from the uh, particular Sierland dialogue, interaction with the local stakeholder, with the government and non-government, as well as some key informant and district level technicians as well as national level policy makers and also review the on these documents policy. So these are the, some slides where we talk about this interaction with communities, household survey and council meetings. So 
let's talk about the result and discussions um, and, and i have divided uh, mainly the impact in the two area because there are the uh, national government has divided the uh, six impact area uh, from the adaptations um, document national plan of adaptations but i choose only the two agriculture and water resources for the this studies and then because agriculture is the main uh, component and 80 percent farmers are uh, cultivating and the crops so the, i choose the major impact on the agriculture and agriculture relate to the water resources so i have uh, chosen the two impacts and these are the farming in the mountain farming and if the these uh, impact particularly the water will be stress or the too much then ultimately it suffer whole the livelihood of the more than 80 percent community of the mountain communities so these are the our mountain terrain then the, this impact mainly the precipitations, the uncertainty of precipitations mainly impact on the maize in the summer crops and also paddy for the uh, wind, uh, even the rainy season crops and also winter wheat, legume and mustard. They have the major impact on the production of agriculture crops, even the uh, wind, wind, the delay or the low rainfall during the winter it also impact the wheat oil crops and rape mustard so and then it ultimately increase the food insecurity in these regions uh, so these are the some impact again in the we talk about the high mountain they have the rangeland or grassland they culture they raise the, their livestock but due to the low rainfall in the the semi-arid region in the near the Tibet in plateau and they, they left due to the low grass productions they, they shift the livestock farming and then they move the other parts as well as uh, sometimes untimely precipitations in the recent of years they have also uh, changed the cropping patterns and also changed the uh, farming even the uh, maize uh, germination is delayed so they change the other but there are some positive impacts in the high mountain because the, they have the good apple farming and the oil apple and uh, in the high altitudes because the, in the past they, they have the low quality but now the temperature increase in the high mountain they have the good quality in the apples as well as the orange in the mid mountains so there are the, some uh, pictures about the drought and then the another one is the we have talk about the impact of the waters water mainly uh, we have the either too much water in the rainy season and no water in the uh, winter season so there are the major problems for us because either we have the, in the too much, there's the flooding, landslide and erosions, and then the dry during the uh, rain, uh, winter and then no crops. So these are the major challenging for us. And then, uh, so th this community has explained that during the last few years, low s snowfall and high rainfall in the high mountain, there is also low snowfalls and also, but intense, the change the snowfall to the rainfalls in the some area and then they are the disturbed to the household, the Mori house also the damage and some, and also they have the reported. So in, in such a case, the high mountain community reported that it was good snowfall in the high altitude, but in, uh, two to three feet in the past, but now it disappeared and negligible amount of snowfall in the high mountains. And then this also noticed the spectral change the surrounding in the last couple of decade and that all used to be snow covered but now they are the barren and dry so these are the major challenges and there are also local people report that water sources from the mountain has also dry and stream flow also decrease but the, it should be further discussed because either the decrease of water source might be uh, human or deforestations or the climate change we, we have to need to further uh, research so there are some adaptation practices i talk already that the, uh, in the high mountain due to the uh, rangeland or grassland as the decrease due to the no snowfalls then they shift the reduce the livestock numbers and change the occupations in the high mountain and even the mid mountain and then tarai they have also adapted some as the community forestry also one of the best examples in the South Asia as a leading in the Nepal, which has also resilience to the managing the resources, not only the agriculture, but also the waters. So community forestry also one of the best examples. And also they have adopted salt soaping agriculture land technology for the mountains and agroforestry also practices. And there are others. 
practices like the vegetable farming as a crop diversification and then also irrigation facilities, so my farmers and conservation pond and some the high mountain they have in the some project area they have drip irrigation also adapted and also there are the traditional water harvesting pond and then planting the this broom grass in the high mountains in the steep land as a conservation. So these are the some uh, practices. Now I talk with the uh, policies. And the major policy, uh, we have the last 20 years, from the Rio General 1992 to the Rio 20 plus in the 2012, there are the 20 years uh, we have the experience of the, uh, this policy on the related to climate change. But there are other policies before all in Nepal also about the environmental perspective. But in 20 years, we have the, this climate change policy and initiated in Nepal. And I will not go. So in 1992, they have the intro in the climate um, from the environmental policy in the Rio to January to the in 2012. We have again to Nepal policy program focus on the climate change integration. So there are the 20 years of experience of the climate change policies. And but last 2009, 10, and 11, there are the more milestones for the implementing the climate change policy. So in 2010, to, the, Nepal has endorsed the National Adaptation Plan of Action to the Climate Change. As well as uh, in 2010, uh, Nepal has also started the RAID initiative for the implementing, for benefiting for the Global Carbon Fund. And also in 2011, uh, climate change policy has endorsed from the government Nepal. And also in even the 2000 level, uh, Nepal endorsed the uh, local adaptation plan of action. So there are in 2009, 10, 11, 12, there are the more milestones for the policy initiative in Nepal. And overall, the, this NAPA, we have the national plan of uh, national adaptation plan of actions. NAPA highlights three area for the national development: the poverty reductions, livelihood improvement, and building resilience. And these are the major guidelines which helps to uh, minimize the vulnerable to the poor people by doing these activities. Let's talk about the, we have the NAPA also. NAPA also the very good in the papers, but uh, we have the, so 80% of the budget goes to the local levels from the, these are the some highlights and I'll, also, these are the main streaming for the development. So these are the, some initiatives for the climate change in the NAPA and there are the uh, this is the framework, I will not explain, but there are the bottom-up approach. It focus on the bottom-up and participatory and to uh, link from the vulnerable assessment to the planning to the national levels. Now, talk about the, we have the, some practice with the, uh, uh, not in the policy, but also there the local uh, community adaptation plan also adapted from the government, not the government, but with the different project like the DFID supported LFP and KIA project. And these also, they make the some community and they have the uh, annual and um, five-year plan for the adaptation policies. But uh, there are some, I'll uh, highlight some things about the, there are the, uh, these, uh, Constitutions, even the third interim plan also focus on the climate change as a major agenda and we have to integrate all the, in the policy and programs uh, for the uh, development uh, so that um, impact will be minimized. And also there are the low carbon emission development path and deforestations and then there are the developing the low methane emissions. There are also some policy highlight. But there are the I will not go to the, these things. So there are the, some uh, positive for the bottom-up approach, integrated approach. There are the, some, uh, in, and then ensuring the participations, and then poverty reductions, and mainstreaming the national agenda. So these are the, some highlights. So there are the gaps. So the, if in the paper there are the very nice and document, but the, the main problem is the there is no capacity for the, this implementing the programs, how it works, and it gives for the local communities, but local community has no, no capacity, even the no institutions, even the no government uh, has able to endorse the programs, if, even the, if there is a budget, but there is no implementing mechanism, so paper is there, but we have the major challenging to the, how to reach these things, so we have to, uh, the target is the questionables. 
So, but uh, there are in uh, some government district level office, they have uh, done about the some practice like the soil conservation programs, uh, early warning system program in some NGO and different uh, district forest office, this agriculture office, they are doing these things for the adaptations. So, in yeah, finished? Okay, thank you.